Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 946. And if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. And in this video, we have a list here. And we need to check and see which one of these items are not in this list, this list, or this list. Now, the match function can be used easily to check if one item is in a single list. But the problem here is obviously there's three different lists. Now, I'm going to do two different solutions here. And I, I could not figure out how to stack all three of these up on top of each other in a formula to use a single match uh, function. Now, obviously, the third option would be to just cut and paste and create a, a single list. But if you have the situation where these lists are definitely different and you can't combine them, maybe this would work. Let's look at the match. Match is a lookup function. You could say, hey, match, lookup Sue, comma, within this range right here. And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, comma. And I'm going to say exact, because I want to look up and find exactly Sue. So I'm going to put a 0. All right? That will work to find the item from is this in list 4 now what does match deliver it delivers the relative position so right now it's going to look up sue in here and deliver a 1 when it looks up red it'll find a 2 when it looks up abe down here match will turn a 1 2 3 4 5 right and when I double click and send this down, NA is what we're interested in. That means it's not in the list. So Sue is not in this list. Um, Phil, let's see, Mo. Oh, sorry. Mo is not in this list right here, right? But it is over here. So let's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to string three matches together. So I'm going to copy this. Because I have to check Sue in this list, this list, or th and this list, all three of them, right? So I'm going to copy that. And I'm actually going to put them three matches inside the choose. Now, the choose function is a great lookup function. You give it an index number. Well, we're going to have three matches in the values here. So it either needs the number one, two, or three. But I want to look at all three matches at the same time. So in the index number, instead of just putting a single one or a single two, in array syntax, curly brackets, I'm going to say, give me one, two, three, all three of them at the same time, and curly bracket. Right. So in the num index, when you put numbers like that inside curly brackets, it's going to tell choose to choose all three of the values at the same time. So comma, that's the first value. Now watch this, comma and control V. All right. But that's the wrong range. So I'm going to highlight that and highlight a new list, an F4. Then I'm going to come to the end. That's value 2. Let's see, the second match is value 2. So I'm going to type a comma, value 3, control V. And now I'm going to highlight that. Notice I don't have to delete it first. I'm going to highlight and hit F4. All right, so now choose has all three things. And check this out. We'll evaluate this by highlighting it and hitting the F9 key again. One, two, three in uh, array. Uh, that's actually a, an array constant. But in curly brackets like that, when I hit F9, boom, it gets all three. Now check this out. It is delivering uh, an array of either values or NAs. So. In this particular, let's control Z, uh, control Enter, and double click and send it down. Now, I'm still going to get the same thing, but watch. Down here, it's NA because the formula, the, a cell chooses, let's see, F9, chooses delivering three values, but that cell can't display all three values. So we need a way, in this case, when the 2 is at the end, because it, the choose is always going to deliver one, two, three thing, three numbers or errors. We need to get to that last one here. Or um, even if one is here, we want to get to the last number, or, or even the first number. It doesn't matter. Control Z. But we always want to access wherever wherever the number is. So I'm going to put this inside the lookup. Right? I'm going to hit comma for a second. Watch this. This is a great trick. I, I, I haven't put the lookup value in yet, but I'm going to hit comma. That lookup vector, that's this, right? Three values in an array syntax. Now, what does match deliver? Match delivers the relative position. Well, match looks in cells here. What's the biggest number of cells you can have? I'm going to click Escape. 
control down arrow. A million forty eight thousand five hundred and seventy six. Well, that happens to be ten to the twentieth power. So inside here for lookup value, I'm just going to put ten caret twenty. That's the biggest number. That way, lookup right there will always find in the lookup vector the last number because approximate matches what lookup does. And if you give it a big, the bigger number than anything in the array of numbers, it'll always get the last one. So check that out. Now it will deliver the number. Control Enter, double click and send it down. So there you see Mo. Mo was two in the third position. And now because we looked up the number using lookup, it went ahead and found it. Now it's the NAs we're interested in, right? So I'm going to put an NA around the is NA. Now I have been doing all this. Let's control enter, double click and send it down. Um, ultimately, we want to extract. Well, right here we have true, true, true. That means nap. Chin and Sue are not in any of the three lists. Now this is fine. This is called a helper column, but I really ultimately want to extract the names. Now what I would like is now it's true, true, true. So there's three trues. They're they're duplicate lookup values. So we'd have to do a, a more complicated array formula. But check this out. I'm going to convert this uh, logical formula to a number. And check this out. I'm going to use the sum. So some function, when it adds a true or a false, it'll convert it to 1 or 0. Notice there's num1. I'm going to come to the end and type a comma. And num2, I'm going to click one cell above. Now the cool thing about the sum function right here is it will ignore text. Now this first one is false, so it'll say text plus the um, false, so sum will get a 0. Control Enter. But when I double click and send it down, when it gets to the first is number uh, true, right? It's adding the 0 from above and the true, so it gets 1. So that Sue, that is a name we need to extract. That Chin, now it's adding 1 plus the true that was there. Notice all these 2's here, those are duplicates. But guess what? It's not going to matter, because when we come over here and use this column, to get the first one, the first two, and the first three, we'll use the match. And the match will ignore all of the duplicates. So now we have our helper column. So I'm going to come over here. A simple index now can be used. What are we looking up? The names in list four. F4 key to lock it, comma. And now I need uh, the row number. Well, I'm going to use the match. And notice I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. So I'm going to use the match to look up the relative position to deliver the row number to index. I'm always looking up 1, 2, 3 as I copy down, so relative cell reference. Within that helper column range right there, F4. And very important, comma, match type, it's 0. Because 0 will only get the first one. Only get the first one, ignore the duplicates. All right, so close that on the match. There's our row number. Close that, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. And there we've used a helper column to create a string of numbers that we can then look up the names in this list that are in uh, neither this list, this list, or this list. Now, how do we get rid of the NAs? In 2007, you can use this great new function, if error. If error looks at the index. If it's a value, it delivers the value. If it's an NA, then we come to the end and say, if it's an error, what do we want? Comma. And I'm going to put double quote, a null text string to show nothing. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now, what if you don't have 2007? You would then use the max function to look up the biggest value here. That'll tell you how many items we need to extract. And then you would do this construction instead. If rows of that one right there is greater than or equal to 3, then blank. Otherwise, your index match. Notice I put rows here. So if you didn't have this number column 1 to 7 or 1 to 500 or whatever you have, you could use that. And that would be a number incrementer. Now, one last important thing here. This, assume, this formula assumes that we we really have three separate lists, and they may be spread out across the spreadsheet or whatnot. But what if 
we could just highlight that whole, the entire range. So in essence, these cells here and the ones in between would never have anything. There's an even easy, a much easier way to get this string of numbers. Simply do count if, and I'm going to say the range, the entire range, F4 to lock it, comma, and then the criteria the name right there. That assumes that all of these blank cells are never going to, you know, aren't going to cause trouble. Control enter, double click and send it down. Now, really what I'm interested in is the zero. So I'm going to come up here and say equal to zero. So I've taken the count if which is a calculating formula delivering a number. Because I put a comparative operator, I've converted it to a logical formula deliver true or false. Control Enter, double click and send it down. We see our trues. We can do our same sum. Sum, and I'm going to go sum of that one up there in the number one, comma, the count if. Notice any math operation on a logical number I mean, a logical, like true or false, will convert it to ones and zeros. But even the sum function can do that, because it's adding it, right? Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. So by all means, that, that's the way to go if you just have three lists like that. All right, uh, that was a lot of fun checking to see if items in a fourth list are in any of three other lists, and then extracting those names into a column. All right, see you next video.